Gordon Lightfoot's name is synonymous with timeless songs about trains and shipwrecks, rivers and highways, lovers and loneliness. His music defined the pop folk sound of the, uh, the 60s and the 70s, chopped charts and the sold millions. While Lightfoot's songs are well known, the man behind them isn't. He's never allowed his life to be chronicled in a book until now. Biographer Nick Jennings has had unprecedented access to the notoriously uh, elusive musician Lightfoot that takes us deep inside the artist's world from his idyllic uh, childhood in Oria in the wild 60s and his canoe trips into Canada's north to his heady times atop the music world. Delighted to be joining me live on the line from Toronto, um, author of Lightfoot, Nick Jennings. Nick, um, good morning to you. Good morning. Great to have Good you. Good afternoon to you. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. Um, great to have you with us. Um, Lightfoot, I mean, he, he was the sound, one of the voices that dis- really cemented the, the idea of the, the singer-folk songwriter. Absolutely. I, I, I think Gordon Lightfoot um, is in many ways the quintessential troubadour. He's, uh, he's always, you know, basically been a man with a guitar and a song. And you know he's he's uh, he's 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 never really drifted far from that. You know he he had a little bit of a flirtation in the '80s with uh, more le- electric instruments and 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 so on. But really he's 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 a folky through and through. And I think that's what's uh, appealed to so many people is his consistency. He's always been a great songwriter um, with that acoustic folk sound. And I mean, the other thing is, I mean, talk me through a little bit about his, you know, his background. Because he, 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 we are only now, especially you know, we heathens in Europe, discovering the, the you know, the, the huge amount of great music. That's, well, because it's been coming out of Canada for years. You think of Joni Mitchell, you think of Neil Young. What is it about Canada that produces these these brilliant songwriters? Well, you know, I think uh, it it has a lot to do, um, you know, with with the, the landscape. I mean. Canada, the, the beauty of the, the Canadian outdoors has been a source of, of uh, inspiration for, for all of those songwriters that you just mentioned and, and so many more. I mean, it, 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 it's been a tradition rooted in Ian and Sylvia, Joni Mitchell, Gordon Lightfoot, Neil Young, Leonard Cohen, um, and those songwriters have kind of formed the foundation, if you like, for a tradition that other Canadian musicians have drawn from. And it, it's really that sense of place. Um, you know, uh, uh, the poetry that these, these songwriters have come up with is often tied to, you know, either uh, interior um, inspiration, love songs, or um, external sources, uh, such as, you know, the Canadian, the Canadian uh, landscape, the rivers, the mountains. In Gordon Lightfoot's case, it's also about, you know, trains and, uh, and ships because he grew up in a small town um, on two lakes, so he was always around water. Um, so those have been been uh, inspirational sources for 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 him and other Canadian songwriters. Tell me a little bit about you know the background then. I mean, his, he he grew up in this, this beautiful place, idyllic. It says in, you know in, in the press notes in the book. Yeah. And 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 how did he get involved with the the, the, the burgeoning, the exploding uh, folk scene in Canada and and get and bring it to a wider world? Well, interestingly, Gordon Lightfoot actually started out. Um, uh, he, you know, he, he he had he had this interesting. Um, beginning where he, he began as a choir boy and very quickly began winning awards for his voice, then sort of shifted into barbershop singing, um, and, and then found jazz. And it was actually, um, you know, that was his, his early passion was jazz music. He would, he would literally be on stage with jazz bands um, singing, but also um, sort of doing a little bit of drumming on the side, um, moonlighting as a drummer in some cases. But it was when he, he discovered that he could, he could write that he could he could compose these these either very personal songs or very um, historically based epics that um, you know he realized that that was his ticket and I think Bob Dylan was a big inspiration to Gordon Lightfoot they both shared the same manager in Albert Grossman and um, you know they very early on became sort of um, mentors of each other because Bob Dylan um, discovered Gordon Lightfoot's Early Morning Rain and recorded it. And, uh, and 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 Lightfoot himself recorded Bob Dylan, and they both they both always admired each other as songwriters, and so that really kind of um, sent him into that realm of, of of wanting to be as much a songwriter as a singer. 
How did he uh, d deal with his fortune and his fame then? Because I mean, we know about you know, it, with the late sixties is the time, the classic time of the of the singer songwriter, all the way down sort of the, the, down to the west coast. So you think Southern California, you think of Jackson Brown, you think of James Taylor. You know, again, we're thinking of Neil Young, you think of Joni Mitchell. Um, how did he yeah. fit into that into that, that that repertoire of artists, and, and and what made him different, and how did he deal with the with the trappings of, of fame? Yeah, well, he he fit. He certainly fit into that uh, that circle because he was playing all the major folk festivals in the '60s. Um, you know, the Newport Festival. He he really made his mark there. The New York Times discovered him, and uh, you know, and and then he made his way out to the West Coast in California. He was a regular at the Troubadour, the famous uh, Los Angeles uh, club. Um, and was, you know, you know, he discovered there by countless American media. So he became a sort of a major folk star, very much in, in the uh, forefront of that movement. But, you know, as, as, uh, as his career unfolded, because what happened is he, he of course, had a, in, in 1974, he had a simultaneous number one single and album of the same name in Sundown. And Sundown really put Gordon Lightfoot over the top. It put him into sort of superstar sort of uh, territory, and he was playing all the biggest stages around the world. I mean, both both in North America, and of course he in Europe. He, he played quite a bit in Europe through the six, the seventies, and uh, and uh, you know I think that the, what happened with Gordon Lightfoot is always been for him about the song. He's never really been interested in celebrity, nor is he very comfortable. Uh, with the the glare of the spotlight off stage, he's he's fine when he's on stage. In fact, that's when he comes alive. But he's he's essentially always been um, more reserved and 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 more shy than a lot of his contemporaries. So he didn't cope with you know massive fame very well. And you know it 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 took, it, it, it resulted in him turning to the bottle. And 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 he was a heavy drinker. Um, not so much. He wasn't about the drugs with Gordon Lightfoot. It was about the bottle. And um, you know. The book had 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 to deal with some of that because there was a lot of fault, personal fallout for him with with the heavy drinking. But you know he 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 was able to quit in in 1982, and that's really been um, you know a, a major turning point for him in his personal life is that he's he's now you know he, he's now been focused entirely on his family and on his music, and he's still he's still touring 70 80 dates a year, which is a remarkable for a guy who's about to turn 79. And it, but you, I mean, you, you managed to get to the crux of you know the the, the, the demons that he's wrestled with you know at, in that period from the sort of the, from the seventies and sixties seventies and, and into the early eighties. But he's a remarkably yeah. private person. So how did you? I mean, I know you've done this sort of thing before. You're a well-known music journalist. But how did you get to speak to to Gordon Lightfoot and, and to and to get his confidence? Well, I in, think, uh yeah, I think it, I think it was a level of trust that uh, I, w I was lucky enough to earn with him. I mean, he he, uh, you know, I'd interviewed him for another one of my books, which was which was really more about the uh, the folk scene in Toronto and Canada in the 1960s. He'd liked the way that turned out. I think he, he he felt a comfort level with me, and I think he also knew because he had a very near brush with death um, in 2002 when he had a a, um, a a very severe aneurysm and he very nearly died. Um, that he realized that maybe now is the time to to open up, and and uh, I, I was lucky enough to be the guy that he felt comfortable enough um, to do that with. And also, not only he opened up, but you also spoke to, to family and friends uh, of Gordon. I mean, uh, how is he held in in regards to the Canadian music scene? How do his how do his fellow musicians uh, look up to him? I know that um, I know there's a quote that uh, Chris Christopherson, the great Chris Christopherson, has said that he's written some of the most beautiful and lasting music of our time. Yes, well, you know, I mean, I think among songwriters, um, Canadian and otherwise, you know, he is absolutely revered as being one of the very best uh, songwriters in the world. I mean, he has he has written some 400 songs, and I would say two dozen of them are, are classics that are known all over the world. Um, you know, you were playing If You Could Read My Mind, but, you know, there, there are so many others, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, um, um, the Canadian Railroad Trilogy, which, despite it being rooted in Canadian history, is a song that uh, even someone like Steve Earle um, has cited as being one of his personal favorites, something that he learned to play as a boy gro you know, growing up in San Antonio, Texas, of all places. So, you know, the Canadianness of Gordon Lightfoot has never held him back. So he's 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 uh, you know someone like Neil Young who who just recorded an, uh, an entire album of cover songs, um, 
Gordon Lightfoot was the only artist on that album uh, of songs that, that w- who had two songs that Neil Young uh, recorded by Gordon Lightfoot, um, both both Early Morning Rain and If You Could Read My Mind. So I think he's 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 revered by songwriters, but in Canada it's a whole other thing. I mean, he's almost like a god up here. I mean, it's uh, you know he he has so. Uh, he has so brilliantly captured what it, the feeling of Canada and what it means to be Canadians, to, to be Canadian. He ha- he's never held back his Canadianness, and so for 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 people here in, in Canada, he's um, you know he he is it's about as big as big as you can get. I, I was going to say that because I was going to say what is I mean we can talk about his you know his influence on his peers at the time, but also his influence on Canadian music and Canadian musicians. And you know we're in another round of of, of singer songwriters again. It comes back in full circle. The music comes back, and now we have you know singer songwriters coming to the fore once again. His influence surely must be seen on the uh, the Canadian music scene now, but also kind of worldwide. Well, you know he he. Um... It, it's remarkable because I think it's all for him. It's always about the songs, and I think it's those songs that you know uh, connect with with uh, with people and with with other musicians, regardless of of of, uh, of of age or or even genre. I mean, Gordon Lightfoot's songs remarkably have been covered by pop groups, disco acts, uh, jazz groups. Uh, you know, there's even been hip hop versions of Gordon Lightfoot songs. I mean, it's the songs that kind of transcend everything because they are just so well written. Um, you know, and I think that's that's really going to be his legacy: is that these songs are going to just go on forever. They're quite timeless. What was the? Uh, I always I always say that when people write a book like this, um, that they sometimes get a eureka moment, or they get they come over something that they haven't discovered. You know, when they're doing the background, was there one of those with with Gordon Lightfoot that you think, aha, that's a, that's something I can sort of hook the book on, or did, were you already familiar with his with his work and and you knew how you're going to approach uh, the subject, and also because of, you know the subject is still very much with us. Yeah, I mean, I I think my eureka moment was really. Um, you know, there's always been a strong streak of melancholy in Gordon Lightfoot's music. I mean, you know, there, there, uh, you know, it, there's just a bit of an ache um, in in those lyrics, and and you know, whether they're songs of of love or or or, or of regret or of loneliness, um, you know. It, and I think when I discovered that Gordon Lightfoot, you know, basically has has always had a he's wrestled with, um, you know issues of mortality i mean he's he's had not, not only in 2002 did he have a brush with death but he's a number of times throughout his life he's come close to dying i mean once once as a as a boy he was nearly uh killed by a, a an oncoming train um and you know he, he 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 opened up to me and told me that you know that was a, had a profound influence on him because it made him sort of wonder like why me why was i spared and you know those kinds of deep Sort of profound uh, reflections, um, I think, have always made him um, realize how lucky he is. But also, sort of, just uh, you know, just 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 wrestling with the, you know, the the the, uh, the raison d'etre, like what, why, who who am I, and why have I been spared? So that I think that combined with his own his own uh, um, humbleness, you know, his his shyness, his reserve, has 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 colored colored his music in a way that's really sort of. Uh, Quite distinctive. Did, did, has, has the great man himself seen? Did you send him a proof before it went to, went to press? I mean, did, have you had any feedback from from Gordon himself on, on on the book, or has he seen it, or did you just you know press the send button and then off it went to the publisher? Well, you know, it, it, it's interesting. As much as I had Gordon Lightfoot's full cooperation on the book, um, and I did have some you know twenty interviews with him over the years, and he he gave me access to his 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 archive, hundreds of photo, personal photographs. But also, he he opened doors for me with his uh, his bandmates and and family and friends who've you know always been a little tight lipped because they they wanted to protect him. So that was a huge help for him to sort of uh, give you know give me that sort of uh, um, introduction to his inner circle. But but for all of that, he uh, he did not um, ask for nor did did uh, m- myself or my publisher give him um, access to the book. So he actually to his credit, did not actually see the book. He had no say on the content of it. He just simply, I think, to my everlasting gratitude, trusted me. So he only saw the book, actually. It just came out September 26th in, in the world and, and uh, available everywhere um, 
through Amazon, um, and, but but through bookstores across North America at the moment. It might get a it might get a UK and and, and European. Um, uh, it, it will be downloadable as well for on the TRE virtual bookstore that we have here as well. So people will be able to be able to download it as well. Yeah, and and you know the uh, but the thing is, he only Gordon Lightfoot himself only saw the book uh, two weeks ago, and um, we had a, a launch party. My publisher threw a launch party for the book the night before last. Gordon Lightfoot came to the launch, and I, that was the first time I had seen him since January. And um, he, he took me aside and he said, you did a good job. It's a real page-turner. And I thought, coming from a man of su- such few words as Gordon Lightfoot, that was high <laughs> praise. And I'm, 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 I'm very pleased that he, he, uh, he thinks I... I, 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 I you know, I, 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 I did a good job. It's a real page. If anyone's going to write a book about your life, it's a real page turn. It has to be the highest accolade, doesn't it? Keep, keep, keep them guessing what's going to happen next. No, I mean, it's, 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 it was, a, it was, a, it was a thrill to hear him say that because, you know, I, I did, you know, the last thing I wanted to do was to tell his life story and be accurate, but not have it be entertaining and dramatic. And I, and you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping that, that that readers will 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 find that his story, which is quite a remarkable journey he, he's had, um, you know, by his own admission, he he has led a very complicated life. He's had uh, six children by four different women. You know, he's he's uh, he's he's had had his ba- you know, as you said, he's battled his demons, and he's come out the other side. And he's uh, you know, for a, for a man about to turn seventy nine, he's 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 doing remarkably well, and he's 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 left just a, such a huge body of of work that. Uh, um, you know, it's, it's a remarkable story, and I, I, I hope that comes across for people. The book is called Lightfoot. It's by Nicholas Jennings. It's out now on Viking. Uh, Nick, Nick, if people want to, to find out more about you, about the stuff you do, or about the book itself, is, is there a website? Do you do the social media thing? How yeah. can people follow you? Yeah, I, I do have a, a, a website, nicholasjennings.com. Um, and, you know, I'm, 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 I'm pretty active on social media, so people can find me through Facebook and Twitter. Now, you've done this kind of thing before, so it begs the question, Nick, um, you know, after writing about Gordon Lightfoot, um, who have you got next in your sights, do you think? Well, you know, there are so many great artists coming up, um, you know, and, and I, 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 you know, I think this is, my, this is my third book, but it's my first biography, and I, I do like the idea of, of uh, delving deep into one artist's uh, story. So um, I, 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 it's too early to say exactly which that artist that's going to be, but I do think my next book will be focusing on another fascinating uh, singer, songwriter, or musician. Well, we look forward to that then. The book is called Lightfoot. It's out now by Viking. Uh, check it out on social media as well. Uh, Nick Jennings, thank you for your time today. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Great, great chatting with you.